right, looks like we've got everybody in here so far. Uh, last couple people connected, but we'll go ahead and get started. So thank you everybody for joining us today for our, uh, our Lunch and Learn, which happens every single week at 12 o'clock PST. Uh, this is a free session just to talk about different things that we have, whether that's software, hardware, different pieces of information that we feel that uh, our customers and different people um, out in the world doing this kind of work may need to know about. Um, so it just gives you all this information. So I wanted to thank you again so much for joining us today. Uh, so today, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be going over uh, the Wingtra system. So let me go ahead and get this started and start sharing our screen here. So um, we have Wingtra 1, and this is the second generation system. Uh, this is the first fixed wing system that Kukurikin has picked up. Uh, we do have some, uh, a few other options that we can have, but um, I, for one, am absolutely blown away by this aircraft. So uh, with, with that being said, why am I the person up here talking to you today? Um, so my name is Brady Reich. I am the Virtual Designing and Construction Reality Capture Specialist, probably the longest title here at Creek and Rankin. So we've got a lot of different specs here that I want to break down just a few pieces for us. So this is the Wingtra Gen 2. Uh, this allows us flight time of up to 90, or sorry, 59 minutes, so very long endurance aircraft. Uh, this aircraft is fairly large. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't have it here to show you in front of me with uh, with props, but we'll have to get by with some of the images here. So we have a four, uh, just over a four foot wingspan. So it's a very large aircraft. Um, this will travel at up to 36 miles per hour. This aircraft will uh, will fly in 27 uh, mile per hour winds gusting to 40. Uh, what happens is because unlike traditional quadcopter aircraft, uh, where we have to basically sustain our flight by allowing the air to be, get pushed down from the props, now with this front system, it is actually a fixed wing system. So we're actually pulling the air over the top and over the, under the bottom um, of the wing to help give us more lift. So this gives us additional um, winds and, and different uh, dynamics than we would with a traditional quad quadcopter system. Uh, this system works between 14 and 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So whether you are in very cold or very hot environments, uh, this aircraft does phenomenal. This is a PPK drone only. So those of you who don't understand or, or don't know what the PPK is, that is a post-processing kinematic. So the imagery that is taken from this drone for all the different camera payloads, uh, there's no geotagging, which means there's no location for the image. So we have to then post-process the information and copy the location of the aircraft to the back end of the image to give it its location. That's our post-processing. So this is post-processing only. This is not real-time kinematic. Uh, this aircraft is also NDAA compliant. You hear this a lot from Google Rankin because we feel this is this is huge. Uh, we're not talking about a lot of different uh, overseas uh, parts that could be compromised uh, in different ways from some of the other manufacturers. So the NDAA compliance just means that it does uh, fit within those parameters so that uh, there's no data sharing or worry about those types of things happening. This aircraft, uh, of course, is RID compatible. Uh, we have heard recently that the uh, remote ID requirement has now been pushed to uh, September the 16th of 2024. So we have a little bit more time before you're uh, required to use the old legacy drones, but this drone comes with it already. Uh, we've got a six mile uh, telemetry range, so very long distance uh, if you can. Uh, the hard part, if you're flying six miles, you probably can't see the drone. So be aware that we will be flying beyond visual line of sight in those uh, areas. It is IP68 rated, meaning that we can fly in uh, light rain. It will be okay and it won't hurt the aircraft um, unless we have a direct jet of water on top of the aircraft. That's usually when it's going to cause a lot of problems. Uh, so IP68 means if you get caught in the rain, you're okay. Land it, get it out of the rain, get it cleaned up, let it dry out, uh, and then we can go and fly it again. But you're not going to ruin the equipment by flying in some of those conditions. Uh, and this aircraft also comes with a rugged uh, Samsung tablet, Active 3 system. So it's very ruggedized. It's got a nice case on it. If you drop it, um, it most times can be covered. Uh, there won't be any issues with the tablet. It, it's very, very rugged. Um, I don't suggest throwing it against rocks, but uh, but if we do happen to drop it, it will likely survive in most cases. That's really the, the wing trick in a nutshell. But what I really want to point out to you right now is on this image, what you'll see is there are only two motors. 
and they're only on the front of the aircraft. It's kind of like a plane, right? Where we're able to propel ourselves forward. The question is, how do we get this thing off the ground? So this is what we call a VTOL system, right? We're, we're talking about a vertical takeoff um, or landing system. And this allows us to actually tip the drone straight up. So as we're taking off from the ground, it's pointed up. It's going to launch and it will get to its transition height that we submit through the uh, application. And then it will transition into a fixed wing aircraft to give us the high efficiency that this aircraft has. So I've got a short little video here just to show you, this is actually upon landing. Now you will notice there's a lot of clouds. Um, we are endurance testing this aircraft specifically, uh, which held up fantastically. Um, but again, you probably won't be flying in these types of conditions. Uh, we had a very heavy wind uh, coming at us and you see it kind of blowing the aircraft and it's trying to stay up right now. It's kind of blowing off to the side. Uh, so this is the vertical landing system right now. Uh, so we're just about to get down to the ground here and you will see it. And you say, hey, Bray, that's tipped over that. There's no way that thing's going to land land straight at the very last second. It actually kicks it down and it touches the uh, the leg at the bottom and that turns the motors off and it rightens itself. So. I was very impressed in our testing with this aircraft with its ability to launch and take off in that vertical mode. So what does it carry, right? What's what the meat is? Why is this important? Well, we have several different types of payloads and I'm not talking about every single payload today. We're just going over the, the three main ones that I see as the big pieces that most people care about. Number one is the Microsense Red Edge uh, P-Series camera. This is a multi-spectral camera, which allows us to capture uh, information on plant health and look at each of the colors separately to help divide information um, to, to disseminate that. So we can use many different types of programs such as PIX40 fields in order to pull information off this camera to get crop uh, health, for example, or the amount of water that might be um, for this agriculture crop or, or um, uh, plants. We get that information from this type of a sensor. So these are uh, a multi-spectral camera and it is fantastic for crop and agriculture um, applications. The next one that I think most people are gonna probably look at first is going to be the Sony RX-1 R2 system. This is a tried and true camera that's been used for many, many years on many different types of aircraft. Um, so this has a huge punch um, to its predecessors um, and gave us a lot of information. This is a high resolution at 42.2 megapixels. Uh, we have a good focal length for our lens uh, camera. And this is, like I said, used across the spectrum with many different types of aircraft. This is really where I believe the entry level, level is. And this is kind of the mid range uh, where you want to be something that's been used for many, many years uh, by many other people using photogrammetry. So it's a great option if you're you're budget conscious uh for large area mapping now the next one the last uh payload i would really like to talk about is uh winter's new system is the rgb 61 camera so this system packs an even bigger punch we have more megapixels we've got more data uh, which allows us to actually fly our drone higher and get the same resolution as we would with the RX-1 R2, which is already a fantastic camera, but now we get better data out of it. So we can fly higher and faster, which means we can cover much bigger swaths of land, much bigger areas to capture this information. Um, it's just incredible uh, with what's coming out of us. And we do have some different data sets we can share with you. And I would certainly urge you to reach out to us and let us know. Um, and we can give you some of the data sets and the images and sample uh, information from these two sensors to see what is the difference, right? Where's the beef? Where's everything in between these two? Um, can you get away with the Sony RX-1 R2 for a little bit less money? Or is it better for you to upgrade now and just get the RGB-61 camera? Uh, both of, or all three of these systems fit in and out of the aircraft very simply. There's basically four screws and it comes with an included uh, uh, hex driver. So you can basically just swap them out in the field very, very quickly. So fantastic systems. Now, in, in order to, to capture data, right, we need to understand what's coming up next. We need to understand the software portion and how we're doing our flights and how we're going to capture information, whether we use the MicaSense system, the Sony RX-1, R2, or the RGB-61 cameras. So we use uh, what's called the uh, Wingtrap Hub system. So this is a centralized software that allows 
allows us to do our flight planning, whether that's in the office or on the tablet out in the field. It allows us to execute the mission to actually fly and do what we tell the drone to do. And this application also allows us to go back and post-process or geotag those images. Remember earlier when I said that the cameras themselves, because they're DSLR cameras, there's no GPS attached to those things. If you take your you know big uh, uh, camera with a nice lens and you take a picture of it, most of the time there's no geotagging information. It doesn't know where on earth this picture was taken. So what the PPK process does is that there's a sensor inside the drone um, and it captures information and then it actually captures the exact time, the split seconds that it takes to take those pictures. Then we've put it all through the Wintra Hub system and it allows us to post process that information. So now the picture would normally not have geotagging. We take the antenna geotagging system and we're post processing and we're embedding that into the image so now we have a geolocated image or something that's accurate uh, to the Earth. So that's really where the, the PPK and geotagging comes into play. What I'd like to show you uh, is let's go ahead and open up um, our Wintra Hub. Uh, what I'd like to say is that at the very bottom here, we have our total work done. So we've got the 18.36 miles uh, that was traveled from the aircraft. We have a total flight time of just under 30 minutes. And we made a coverage, or, or the area covered was 191.90 acres. That's huge. That's a big area. Think about it, if you were to fly a quadcopter over the top of this, this area, you'd have to fly very, very quickly to get the same uh, speed out of this. And most of the time, your drone won't allow you to fly that fast. So the Wintra was certainly the option for this specific uh, application. And we were able to take 857 images, um, and we have basically a terrain awareness and terrain flight. So we have this little uh, arrow on the very bottom that shows us Here's our topography on the ground. Here's our safety buffer that we have to fly above in order for the wing to operate to make sure we have enough space um, because we're traveling very quickly. We don't want to run into trees or power lines and other things. And our actual flight height was 387 feet above the ground. So we can look at all this information. This is a huge area and I, I would love to show you the data to it. I'm happy to share any of this information forward to you if you'd like to see the point cloud information. Um, I'm just not on the, uh, the computer that I can pull up that information, but reach out to us, let us know. I'm happy to share any of that to you um, or get you on a, a private uh, Zoom call. We can invite a few people in there if you'd like to. So this is the Wintra Hub system. So this allows us to do the flight. We basically upload the mission, our, our safety checks, make sure we go through everything. And then we finally have a geotagging tab that we can then, after the fact, take all the images off the camera, the PPK information off the drone, and now combine that together. And then we finally go through and process this in uh, many different types of photogrammetry softwares. Um, personally, I like to use Pix40 is, is uh, usually my go-to uh, Pix40 Matic now. Um, but there's many different types that you can use. They're just images that you're trying to stitch together to then extract to get your point cloud information, contours, um, anything like that. So just incredible uh, amounts of information. So uh, with that, that is the software for uh, Pix4D. Let me just make sure we're sharing the screen here. Um, at Kukarink, we have many different options here. Of course, Wingtra being one of the newest that we have available and the first fixed wing that we have available. Um, and of course, you can probably see a, a theme in this image where they're all orange. Uh, for any, those of you who do any work with us already, uh, you know that we love our orange drones because, uh, not just because it matches the Kukarink and orange, but primarily because when we're in the air, we can see this thing very far away. Uh, when you have black or um, grays or whites, it's very difficult to see it at further distances. So uh, having them bright colors really certainly does help. But this is kind of a lineup of um, some of the top uh, systems that we do have from Inspired Flight, Micro Drones, uh, MapTech, Autel, and, and now Wintra, which we're very excited to go through and carry. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and ask for questions. I do see we've got some uh, some things posted in chat. So if you give me just a moment to go through this and see what we have here. There we go. Okay. Uh, sorry, one moment. Let me get to where we have. Uh, are there optional joysticks uh, that can be employed or manually flown with the sliders through the flight app? So great question, Lucas. So all of the uh, 
the movements of the aircraft. The, the whole idea is that this aircraft will be mostly autonomous. Um, however, you do have some control. You can pause it, and there are uh, buttons on the screen that you can tap on to adjust the elevation um, and kind of move around like a quadcopter. Um, but it's something that has to be done on the screen. There's no uh, manual joysticks that you can uh, utilize. Uh, so another question is, uh, if you don't have uh, the PPK antenna activation, uh, can you get reasonable accuracy geotagging after the flight? Um, the answer is no. What happens is the camera does not have any geotagging whatsoever. So you have to combine it with something. So uh, Wingtrait allows you to bring in the post-processing and then merge that with the images to give you geolocation uh, information. So you can always tie it to uh, some sort of a control, uh, but it's not going to be accurate to the earth until you use your, your ground control points, for example. Uh, let's see here. I'm going through. Bear with me for just a few moments here. Uh, if the wind craft flies behind a ridge uh, and the control signal is lost, will it complete the planned mission? So you can set it to either complete the mission or return back to home. Um, there is a geofence that essentially is set up where when you launch it, you can customize how big that area would be, and it will not allow you to break um, that geofencing location. So you customize and you specify that. It's not put onto you to say you have to do the, uh, the geolocation. Let's see here. I'm still going through. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I only seen my slide, so I apologize. It was only on the slide. Um, and uh, so there are um, some altitudes. I've got to get to the, uh, so uh, Ken, you had, I'm sorry, Kevin, you had a question about the maximum altitude. Um, it's, uh, oh gosh, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head and I don't have it right in front of me, but I can certainly pull up the specification to get you information. There is a maximum altitude uh, for flying the Wintra. And really what that is, is it allows you to change the props to get you to an even higher location. So it's a high uh, high altitude prop that allows it to cut through the air um, a little bit better, uh, with a little more efficiency, because the higher you go, the less uh, the uh, density altitude changes. So you have less air to push against. Uh, so can you have uh, basically pay for the PPK uh, activationist software that you would uh, essentially have as a ranger kit, and that would allow you to use the PPK to add to uh, your images. Okay. All right. And I think those are those questions uh, that we have so far. Uh, do we have any other questions on uh, Facebook showing up that we need to address? Not before today. We start Brady. wrapping up here. Okay. Perfect. Well, uh, what I'll say is thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate uh, everyone coming in uh, to be with us here today. So like I said, every week we do have a Lunch and Learn happening. Uh, the next Lunch and Learns that we have available is going to be uh, October the 11th. It's going to be an introduction to the Utah LTAP and how um, Kuk Rankin is using the gear in the field, and that's going to be with Ben Goddard next week. So we're really excited for that one. We have uh, October the 18th, like a Captivate firmware uh, updates. That will be with Jeremy Kippen. And then on October 25th, we will be talking about the seafloor overview with Alex uh, uh, Kearns Twitchell. So that's going to be for um, waterborne systems using the seafloor system. So I wanted to say thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Um, again, if you do have any additional questions, all of my contact information and Cook Rankings information will be in the chat. Uh, you can also check out previous Lunch and Learns by uh, going to cookerankin.com slash lunch and learn. There's a link. Um, or you can also sign up for our newsletter as well. And there's a link to, to stay in what's happening in the world, right? What's new? What's what's new? What What's changing? Um to get the most direct information as quickly as possible. And of course, reach out if you have any additional questions. But with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Thank you so much for spending the last 21 minutes with me today. Really appreciate every single one of you. And certainly if you've got any questions, you know, just that's what we're here for. So thank you so much. And everyone have a wonderful rest of your lunch. We'll see you next week.